bonjour, mesdames, messieurs. Uh, salutations de Brendan O'Connor. Et s'il vous plaît, veuillez accepter mes excuses pour ma présentation en anglais. Today I'm introducing you to the Havering Hoard. It's an unusual find in Britain because it was discovered during excavation, whereas the majority of the hoards in the UK are discovered during metal detecting activity. And it's also been brought to exhibition in record time in less than two years, although the situation COVID meant that there has been a lot of delays in the exhibition being open. It will now be open from May the 12th, hopefully, until August the 21st. So hopefully you will all have the opportunity to come and see it in the UK at the Museum of London Docklands. It's been the result of um, collaboration between a number of people, some of who you may recognise in this picture. So in September 2018, archaeologists excavating at the quarry um, in Havering, it's a site called Wennington, um, in the London borough of Havering in East London, down here in the southeast of England. And they're excavating on this site and they discovered a well-preserved late Bronze Age hoard. As you will notice, the site is located at the edge of the gravel um, terrace, overlooking this marshland um, with the Thames just to the west. It's a small enclosed settlement um, located to the east of the marshland and in the centre we have a roundhouse, we have this interesting four post structure to the west, the entrance to the east and the hoard pit located at this western end opposite the entrance with four deposits within the hoard. They were buried in a pit that had been cut into the excavation or into the enclosure ditch. The ditch had already partially filled by the time the pit was cut into it. It seems to have been the internal bank of the enclosure had eroded into the ditch. The hoards are numbered by the order in which they were discovered rather than the order in which they were buried, though they all seem to be contemporary burials. You'll notice hoard four up the top here is the smallest hoard. Um, this was located right at the top of the feature and there's a strong possibility that this was actually um, truncated, it was damaged in the past before discovery. So the first hoard was a surprise, it was found whilst excavating a segment of the ditch. It was found on a Friday evening as is typical and the excavation team had to work late into the night to finish lifting this hoard. So it had axes at the top and down at the bottom it seems to have had pieces of copper ingots, pieces of objects and this chape or buterol um, located towards the bottom here which have fantastic preservation. We have the wooden dowel surviving within the chape with a little copper alloy rivet passing through it so this would have held the leather sheath at the bottom of the sword would have been attached to it but there's no evidence of the leather or any other organic components of these objects in the hoards. The remaining three caches or hoards were excavated in the lab by Pieta Greaves. You'll see the excavation here of hoard two. You may notice pieces of organic material within the hoard coming up in the centre here. These pieces of straw packing um, have been really well preserved where the objects have been closely packed together. And you can see on the axe to the right, just some of the organic packing surviving. At present, we haven't been able to radiocarbon date this, but I remain hopeful. The remainder of the three hoard, of the hoards two to four, so the last three hoards, didn't seem to have any order to the structure of the objects in them or the way that they're placed in the ground. Overall, there are 453 items in the hoard, although there'll actually be more when research is finished because the x-rays show that a number of the sockets still have pieces within them, such as this on the left, which looks like it has a small part of either a sword tip or a spearhead tip within the socket there and other pieces. Only a small percentage of the hoard was conserved fully. A large number of the objects still have soil adhered to them and within the sockets. You'll notice also that the sizes of the hoards are relatively similar in terms of both number of objects and weight, 
until you get to this last hoard four. And the majority of them are incomplete and broken objects. We have very few whole objects. Amongst the whole objects are axes. These make up 30 to 40% of the entire hoard. That's axe pieces as well as complete axes. This percentage is very typical for late Bronze Age hoards in Britain and in, particularly in England and Wales. We also have in the hoard complete spearheads and pieces of spearheads. Again, these seem to have been intentionally damaged or accidentally, but on the whole, intentionally damaged. Um, we have fragments of swords, no complete swords. Again, this is typical for these late Bronze Age hordes. And then we have a few pieces of other items, um, tools such as gouges. We have one razor. We have a few items of harness fittings and a few tools. We also have a large number of ingot fragments, these copper ingot fragments and a few pieces of casting waste. Again, these amount to about 30 to 40% of the entire hoard. We're missing a number of items that you would expect for the late Bronze Age hoards in the UK, particularly um, items such as bugles and other strap fittings. So the hoard is located in a very busy Bronze Age landscape. If you look at the map on the left, this shows an output of the data from the Portable Antiquities Scheme, which is focused on finds from England and Wales, metal detected finds on the whole. And you'll see that hoards are very much dominant in the eastern part of the UK. But we also have it in the immediate vicinity. These are hoards discovered through various activities, including antiquarian. We have about 80 hoards from this area. The majority of them dating to the Europe part phase, the last part of the Bronze Age, late Bronze Age. And this is a time when we're getting less human burials. Um, we're also getting sites with metalworking evidence that comprises solely of clay components, clay moulds, crucible fragments. These are located at sites such as Mucking and South Hornchurch, which are settlement sites, whereas the hordes are primarily located away from settlements. Havering again then being exceptional in that it is located right close to a settlement. It also has similar items compared to the Broadnest Horde to the south of the Thames, um, the Borstal Horde, Isle of Harty, Minnis Bay, um, whereas it doesn't have the same components as the massive Borstal Mallaby Horde, which you may be familiar with, with its vast number of um, carps, tongue swords, fragments and end-winged axes. We only have one end-winged axe from the Havering Horde. So the Horde has been dated so far on the basis of the objects within, particularly the sword fragments. We have a few carp's tongue pieces, but mostly we have Ewart Park sword pieces. Um, just to show you an example of a complete Ewart Park sword, this one was found in a quarry in New Toxeter, um, north of Birmingham, um, last year. And here we have Neil Burridge admiring it. Neil Burridge you may be familiar with through his own castings. In fact, I think Claude will be particularly familiar with this beautiful sword made by Neil that was presented to him in Bayo in 2019. We also have some more unusual items in the hoard. So these are the bits that were in the middle of the earlier picture. We have this item, um, which appears to be some kind of anvil or um, an awl. It's been suggested it could be you could shape them with this end. It would have been double-ended originally. I found comparisons in the Isle of Harty hoard and there's one recently found in a hoard in Scotland, but again these are quite rare objects. We also have items that are more familiar across the channel. So for those of you based in France, we have this beautiful piece of sword fragment, which Francis Bordard has kindly identified for me as being similar to ones in northern France, um, as seen on the right in this picture. But we do have a piece in the Borstal Hoard in Kent, which is again more elaborately decorated than a lot of those we find in England, um, but not quite the same as our piece here. 
And then we have this item, which is one of my favourites. It's completely unknown in a hoard in Britain. And this appears to be a terret or rain ring. It was found in hoard three, slightly crushed. It has a lead core, which seems to have corroded and expanded inside the metal. It's a cast piece. An incomplete pair of it was found in deposit two in this hoard. So we've got deposit one, two, three and four, and three and two have these similar items. Again, the best examples are over in France at Vénard, uh, La Chapelle de Roche. One possible example has recently come up through metal detecting in southern England, um, but it's nowhere near as well preserved as this. And finally, we have this piece also from Horde 3, seen up at the edge here, a bracelet fragment, again, coming potentially across from the channel, an imported item. It seems to be that some of these items have been imported or potentially made further afield. They've been used, all the objects in, in the hoard show signs of use, particularly the axes, and then intentionally broken, broken into pieces the size that would fit fantastically in the crucible, but never melted down. It seems to be this deposit is happening towards the end of the life of the settlement. Perhaps it's a gathering together of artifacts from the community to represent their activities during their lifetime at this settlement. And it also brings together the community of research today, who I'm very grateful for their support, particularly Andy Peachy, Pieta Greaves, Kate Sumnall, Neil Wilkin at British Museum, Francis Bordard, Brendan O'Connor, and thank you also to APRAB for hosting my paper today. Hope to see you at the exhibition. Thank you very much, Sophia. And for your time, perfect time. <laughs> Euh, ben, on a donc cinq minutes pour des questions, si vous voulez, par le chat ou en direct. Non, les, les jolis objets parlaient d'eux-mêmes, en fait. Oh, we haven't done any metallographic um, analysis yet. That's a question from Jean-Pierre. Um, so far, the hoard has just been weighed, measured, um, recorded. Um, we're hoping in the future to get some funding to do metallographic studies. Um, it's all now um, owned by the Museum of London and will be accessible for anybody who wants to do any further research on it. Il y a aussi Laura Edme qui a une question qui demande est-ce que les lingots sont en bronze ou en cuivre? Cuivre. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is an, an assessment, but in comparison to the others from the UK, these are these are copper ingots. We don't have any sign of these melted molten masses of, of bronze. Apologies for answering English. Oh, we have a question. José, une question. Oui, simplement pour les, les fragments de d'épée avec de nombreux filets gravés euh, qui font de pseudo relief. En fait, on les voit apparaître dès l'étape précédente euh, du bronze final. Euh, je vous renvoie au dépôt d'Ourtin dont on vient de déposer justement le manuscrit à l'SPF. Et on est dans le bronze final 3A, donc juste l'étape précédente déjà. Mary Lou, would you mind to um, re repeat what Jose said for me? Um, I know, je le faire si tu veux. Ah oui, vas-y, parfait. Oh, Rebecca. <laughs> hi, hi, Sophie. Uh, he, he, uh, Jose just said that to the, um, the the fragments of, of sores with the, the grooving, in fact, they are dated to uh, an earlier phase, the, the previous phase of the uh, Final Bronze Age, and uh, Jose has, has just published a paper on it in the uh, the Bhutan de la Société Préhistorique. So you, you'll probably Fantastic. see it soon. Fantastic. Yes. Um, Oh, that, that's a good um, piece of information because we were wondering whether we had any older items in the hoards. A lot of the ones in, in England do have some old pieces within them. So it's useful to know I have this. So, so thank you and I will um, read your paper.
Il n'y a plus de questions ben, On peut passer euh, à la communication suivante. Merci beaucoup, Sophia. Euh, à Eugène, donc. Un nouveau dépôt en Vallée-Mosanne.